So let first of all we have a stress matrix which is given as sigma x tau xy tau xz tau xy sigma y tau yz tau xz tau yz sigma z so this matrix is symmetrical about the diagonal information they can give in the stress matrix similarly we have a strain matrix on diagonal elements we have epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z and all tau you have to replace as gamma divided by 2 so it's a gamma xy divided by 2 gamma xz divided by 2 gamma yz divided by 2 gamma xy divided by 2 gamma xz divided by 2 gamma yz divided by 2 standard state of stress is sigma x positive value right word tau xy is positive value this is sigma y positive value tau xy is positive value sigma x tau xy sigma y this one is tau xy all value are representing positive so on any inclined plane which makes an angle of theta with the vertical the normal stress is sigma theta and tangential stress is tau theta so on any plane we can calculate angle as sigma theta is same as sigma x dash sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos of 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta similarly we can calculate the shear stress on in inclined plane tau theta equals to this value will not you have to use and just extend the sign minus of this become plus it's sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 sine and cos you have to exchange so it is sine of 2 theta plus tau xy into cos of 2 theta in a similar fashion we can write down for epsilon theta as epsilon x plus epsilon y upon 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y by 2 you have to copy down everything cos of 2 theta only tau x is replaced by gamma xy by 2 into sine of 2 theta and when you have to calculate gamma theta by 2 we have minus of epsilon x minus epsilon y by 2 sine 2 theta plus gamma xy by 2 into sine theta epsilon v is change in volume upon original volume that is dv by v is normally given as epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z in case of cylinder volume is pi by 4 square l so power of d is 2 power of l is 1 so we can directly write down based on power epsilon v equal to 2 times epsilon of d divided by 1 time epsilon of l Similarly for Q, we have A, B, C volume. So, epsilon V is epsilon A plus epsilon B plus epsilon C. And if A equal to B equal to C, we have write down 3 times of epsilon. For sphere, we have volume equal to 4 by 3 pi R cube. So, power of R is 3. So we have epsilon V equal to 3 times of epsilon D. Because epsilon R is same as epsilon D. That is pi by 6 D cube formula. Similarly, we can calculate true stress also. So, true stress equals to sigma of engineering stress into 1 plus near strain of engineering and true strain is ln of 1 plus engineering strain engineering strain is given as initial length minus final length upon initial length and stress for engineering is given as force upon initial area whereas true strain is defined as integral of dl by l we have a standard three ratios three elastic constants the yang modulus modulus of unity and bulk modulus so e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu E is equal to 3k 1 minus twice mu this is the relation between the three elastic constants remember that the value of maximum value of mu is 1 by 2 mu always ranges from 0 to 1 by 2 similarly for cork value of mu is equal to 0 for rubber paraffin wax value of mu is equal to 0.5 and therefore the value of delta v will be 0 in this case for metals modulus is always greater than bulk modulus is always greater than the modulus of rigidity modulus is given as stress divided by strain that is longitudinal bulk modulus is given as hydrostatic stress on volumetric strain then we have poisson ratio which is mu is defined as minus sign lateral strain upon longitudinal strain the deformation in deformation of mild steel is always less than the deformation of cast iron in the elastic region whereas for plastic region the deformation of mild steel is very large as compared to the deformation of cast iron. The delta plastic for MS is very high as compared to CI. If all the three forces are acting and all the three stresses are present, then the linear strain along x direction is 1 upon E into sigma x minus mu times sigma y plus sigma z. You can extend this relation for y and z direction. It is same as delta x upon original length x. Similarly, we have epsilon y. 1 upon e sigma y minus mu times sigma x plus sigma z 
is delta y by y. Similarly, we can write a third dimension also that is epsilon z, which is 1 upon e sigma, sigma z minus mu of sigma x plus sigma y. So, allometric strain will be simply equals to 1 minus twice mu divided by e into sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. For a prismatic bar of a uniform cross section, dl is given by pl upon a e. This time the cross section is circular and uniform or any any cro uniform cross section we can use this equation. If you have a tapered bar with both sections circular then you can calculate A and use the previous formula A equal to under root of A1 A2 and use the same formula PL by AE. And if you have a rectangular section of uniform thickness then you can calculate A using A1 minus A2 upon ln of A1 by A2 and replace this A in the original formula of PL by AE. Remember thickness is constant here. If you have a vertical bar, put it at a hinge, then there is a elongation due to self weight, which is given as DL equal to PL divided by twice AE is same as gamma multiplied by L square divided by twice E, where gamma is called as specific weight, that is rho multiplied by G. The weight of the bar is rho multiplied by AL will be mass multiplied by G will be weight is same as gamma multiplied by A multiplied by L. In this equation, we have assumed the cross section is constant or uniform circular section. For the same case, the bar is tapered, then elongation due to self weight is given by PL divided by twice AE into gamma L square by 6 times E. Then we have thermostresses. In thermostresses, stress is given as alpha times T multiplied by E. So we have reaction force is alpha T multiplied by E multiplied by A. The diameter will change as alpha into Td into 1 plus mu. If the support is yield, then you can calculate as delta thermal minus delta mechanical equal to delta. And if the bar in series, we can calculate this value as 2 bar in series alpha Tl1 plus alpha Tl2 equal to sigma 1 Le plus sigma 2 Le. And if bars in parallel, then alpha 1 Tl1 minus alpha 2 Tl2 must equal to mechanical compression. And the Newton's third law still exists, sigma 1 A1 equal to sigma 2 A2. Then in shear force and bending moment, 